afternoon, dear friends. It's my, I'd like to thank Dr. Mayur Agarwal and his team and Harmon India for connecting all us together. Thyroid functions could be a problem sometimes. So I'll be talking about the interpretation of those challenging thyroid functions. And there are some cases that I'll be taking through. So I think interpretation, as I told you, many times you generally it is straightforward, but sometimes you may see the conflicting reports which are not telling with your clinical you know, picture of the patient. And there are many cases where you need reassessment with clinic context, provide explanation for those discrepant thyroid functions tests. And failure to recognize these potential pitfalls can lead to misdiagnosis and many times inappropriate management of patients. This is what many times these patients they suffer and we keep, keep seeing them off and on. I think we are aware this about this slide. We have seen it several times. We have hypothalamus, which produces TRS or thyrotropin releasing hormone, which works on anterior pituitary, which is to produce TSS or thyroid distributing hormone working on thyroid gland. And then, then, then thyroid naturally with collaboration of or coupling of iodine, DIT and MIT and with the help of uh, those anti, you know, uh, thyroid peroxidase enzymes, it produces and releases thyroid hormones in the blood from the follicular cells of the thyroid. And these T3 and T4, they come out, mainly it is you know, T4 and it gets converted in the liver and kidney and periphery into T3, which is more active as compared to T4. So this is what we keep seeing. This is the normal regulation of thyroid hormone synthesis. And it's, this is what, um, so we have positive effect from hypothalamus to pituitary, which has positive effect from on thyroid and thyroid hormones, they have negative effect. So we have T3, T4, if they are high, you have the suppressed TSS. And if they are low, you have the elevated TSS. As simple as that, we are aware of that. Again, this is the same. So types of thyroid function tests we do, hormone, there's a T3, T4, and sometimes we do 3T3, 3T4, and we have this hypothalamopituitary thyroid axis. To see the integrity, we have TSS, and sometimes, occasionally, we do TRH stimulation test, and rarely, we do T3, T4 suppression test, which we have been doing initially now. Very people do that. For, to look for iodine metabolism, we have iodine, you know, optics and that scintigraphy, or we call it the thyroid scan is there. We also sometimes see BMR and cardiovascular indices like pulse rate and other things. And we have sometimes etiologically, if you wish to see, we do the immune markers, especially anti-TPO, anti-thyroglobulin, anti-body. So that's what we do normally, regularly. So, and, and imaging wise, we have the MRI, CT, as well as sonography is available. And many times we do the FNAB. So this is what the thyroid function tests are. So we have very, very important uh, linear relationship, a uh, long linear relationship between TSS as well as between the T4 or 3T4 hormones. First the, you have the TSS, is, we call it a barometer of thyroid functions, or we use it as a screen test. This is the normal range of TSH, and we have wherever there's a two to three fold up or down in 3T4, you have a hundred fold up and down in TSH. So you see the minor difference in T3, T4 levels, but you see the major differences in, in TSH level. This is what the hundred times, hundred fold as compared to 3T4 or T4. And now we have the conditions where the measurements, so as I told you, the TSS, we use it as a screening test, but many times it may not be the real screen test, especially if the patient has secondary or tertiary hypothyroidism, where the defect is in hypothalamus or pituitary. There could be non thyroid illnesses. There could be patient with on treatment of thyroid oxycosis that TSS remains suppressed for a long period of time, but T3, T4 are normal. And there could be sometimes resistance to thyroid hormones. And many, so rarely I have seen, and sometimes we see TSS secreting pituitary adenoma or thyrotropinoma or TSHoma. So these are the things. 
We have PSH producing pituitary tumor. We have thyroid hormone resistance. Your patient is on treatment for thyroid toxicosis. Patient is on non-thyroid illness or patient is second due tertiary hypothyroidism. That is the time where could PSH alone level could be misleading. So you need to certainly see the T3, T4 and see the patient as a whole. That is very, very important to note. And this is the algorithm for thyroid hormone function or dysfunction where we do TSH normal, we call patient normal. If TSH is, is high, we do the pre T4. If it is low, we can hypothyroidism. When pre T4 is normal, TSH is mildly elevated, we call it subclinical hypothyroidism. When TSH is low, we do pre T4. If it is normal, we call it subclinical hyperthyroidism. So I have both subclinical hypo and hyperthyroidism. If T4 is high, then we call it hyperthyroidism. So TSH suppressed. T4 high, hyperthyroidism, TSH high, and, and low uh, T3, T4, you call it a hypothyroidism, as simple as that. It's a pattern of thyroid. Uh, this thing, you have pre T3, T4 or T3, T4, normal TSH, you have that uh, elevated T3, T4, suppressed TSH, and you have elevated TSH with normal T3, T4. Here will be hypothyroidism, will be hyperthyroidism, and, and, and then we have uh, this thing, the hyper and hypo. This is also, you know, there are many causes of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. I'm not going to go in details. And if you see normal patient is having 3T, 3T4 and suppressed TSS or elevated TSS and you have C, a low T3, T4 and, and low TSS as well as the elevated TSH. So there are different like subclinical hyperthyroidism and subclinical hypothyroidism. You, as I told you, some drugs like steroids, dopamine can give rise such effect and you could see some acid defects could also be there. Non-thyroid illness is also important cause for all these, you know, defective sort of, you know, thyroid functions. Yeah, here where T3, T4 are low and TSH is normal or low, you have non-thyroid illness, pen hypopetroidism, TSH isolated, TSH deficiency, sometimes as a interference could be there. When elevated T3, T4 and elevated T4, as a interference is thyroid hormone replacement therapy, drugs like amidoron, heparin, non-thyroid illnesses, sometimes a neonatal periods, and TSH secreting adenoma or resistance to thyroid hormones. So those things are, are, are there. Pre- Laboratory wise, there are pitfalls out there, but things they go can go wrong. Like patients have pre uh, laboratory or laboratory or post laboratory defects, like paying insufficient attention to clinical context, like age of the patient is important, pregnancy changes there, thyroxine therapy patient is taking sometimes some confound confounding medication, then non thyroid illnesses they can give you pitfalls in thyroid functions. The laboratory wise, there could be limitations as far as these assays of T3, T4, TSH are concerned. Especially, there could be heterophil antibodies, anti animal, you know, IgGs, anti thyrotropin antibodies, and familial disharmonogenesis. All those things there can post laboratory. There are you no know, limited experience dealing with rare or genetic or acquired uh, thyroid pituitary uh, you know, disorders, hypothalamic pituitary. Thyroid disorders like the resistance to thyroid hormones, as I told you before, disorder of, of transportation of thyroid hormones, there could be dysmetabolism of these and TSH secreting adenomas could also be there. So one has to be careful as far as pre laboratory, laboratory, and post laboratory uh, things are concerned when, uh, whenever we are interpreting some you know uh, unusual thyroid function test. So uh, the interference with thyroid immunosis could be method of choice, there could be measurements of thyroid function, which we are not aware as a clinician, and, but they are vulnerable to different types of interferences that can result into erroneous clinical decisions. Like macro TSS interferences, sometimes biotin, anti-streptovidin antibodies, anti-dubithinium antibodies, TS, thyroid hormone autoantibodies, and heteropolent. So many antibodies, they can interfere in thyroid function. So the pathologist should be aware about it and they should warn us that there could be some problem and we repeat those or, or interpret those things. Many drugs like lithium, they decrease the thyroid hormone release. 
amiodarone can give rise both uh, which is used for arrhythmias, hyper as well hypo, SSRI, antidepressant which we use frequently, they increase TSS levels, estrogen can increase the TBT or thyroid binding globulin and decrease the pre-T4 levels. Androgen steroids, they can decrease TBT, thyroid binding globulin and they increase the free hormone level. So drugs have to be important. Estrogen, androgens, antidepressant, amiodarone, lithium. Usually we use many times these drugs are there and patient has some misinterpretation of thyroid hormone, uh, thyroid uh, hormone uh, results or thyroid function results. We have a case who is for 24 years lady who is having irregular cycle. She is feeling tired, fatigue, weight gain is there. And she comes to us and her pre T4 is on the lower side, TSH is, is high. I think this is a simple case. She has a clinical symptom. She has a suspicion of having thyroid dysfunction. T3, T4 are low, TSH is elevated. You call it a primary hypothyroidism, no doubt about it. So simple case. Another case is a 40 years of lady, the mother of two, having weight loss, palpitation, neck fullness is there. She has a stare or eyes are quite big. T3, T4 are high and TSS separates. Again, you may say the suspicion is more, hormones are more, TSS is suppressed, so we call this hyperthyroidism or thyroid toxicosis. It could be a grave disease, or sometimes you may see release of these hormones because of thyroiditis, and that could be there. Or sometimes we call that over, uh, replace, you know, thyroid hormone, uh, this hypothyroidism is there. We, we have given more than the usual uh, case uh, thyroid hormone ditching. So that is very, very important. Another case is 18 years of girl who is having putting on weight and a systemic review was normal. General checkup was shown that 3T4 is, is normal. One, one, this one, TSS is mildly elevated. You may call it is not more than 10. It is between 5 to 10. You may call it subclinical hypothyroidism. She has symptoms not there. She has some suspicion because of weight. The thyroid hormone reports are normal, but TSH is bit elevated or mildly elevated. We call it a subclinical hypothyroid. This is what we should interpret these results. This is relationship. I told you linear relationship diagnosis TSH is due to pre T4. This is pre hypothyroid, pre normal range. And you see, as soon as patient becomes hyperthyroidism, the TSH gets suppressed. And in hyper hypothyroid range, even twofold. Decrease or decrease in pre T4 level, you have 100 fold rise or reduction in, in, in TSS level. So, this is how the TSS become very, very sensitive, very, very important parameters to look, look for thyroid dysfunctions. And this is another case where you say mild subclinical hypothyroidism, moderate and clinical risk problems, interpretation, evolution. This is T3, T4, and pre T4. This is elevated, this is T4 is high. Or low. So, this is, you know, we, we have the different kind of uh, results where you see the normal, you see the T3 is normal, T4 is low, and this is so what will you call it? And sometimes you see all three low T3 low, T4 low, and 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 and, and it's, I'll be doing password. I'll do that. Sure. Uh, and differential diagnosis for subclinical hypothyroidism, this is there. It is autoimmune thyroid disease like Hashimoto's, partially or recently treated hypothyroidism, recovering from thyroiditis or recovering from non-thyroid illnesses. And you see sometimes adrenal or pituitary hypothyroidism, drugs like amiodarone and lithium and obesity can give rise to subclinical hypothyroidism. So I don't have to go in detail, but certainly this is what we see in such type of patients. And this is a uh, paper published by Rakesh Nair and et al. And this is TSS level showed a static cell significant decline postprandially. This is so the difference in fasting and postprandial values, decline in postprandial in comparison to fasting. This may be a clinical implication in diagnosis and management of hypothyroid, especially subclinical hypothyroid. So when you are doing the test, that is also very important, whether you are doing in fasting state or you are doing after the meals. And conclusion, test timing, of sample or food intake alters that this is an, another serum. No, they have published this data and they say timing or test of TSS value, this should be factored in making decision diagnosis. So once it is a clear cut, you don't have to worry. Once you are in doubt, you find out at what time the patient has given the blood or blood was taken. 
another case she 30 years of lady she is married with for two years she is having pregnancy t3 and t4 are high and tss is normal so what you are going to see whether you call it hyper no i may not call it hyper because you are seeing that she is having pregnancy total t3 t4 are high but tss is not suppressed and naturally because of thyroid binding globulin you see in training pregnancy elevated t3 t4 sometimes mid to low pre t4 but tss is normal and clinically lady is normal this is pre t4 is is here is normal t both they are pre t3 t4 but normal so we call it a pregnancy related uh, physiology of pregnancy where you see t3 t4 are getting released because of tbg thyroid binding globulin you have reduction in pre t4 and elevated total t3 t4 uh, elevated and reverse t3 is more if you do it and because hcg comes out from the placenta especially in early pregnancy you see the suppressed tss also sometimes you see suppressed tss elevated t3 t4 if patient clinically having no vital no eye signs you may just leave it as as and you may ask for the free uh, hormone levels of t3 and t4 and this is the normal physiology where you see the elevated hcg and suppressed ts tss this is suppressed tss elevated you know hcg is elevated free total t4 and is elevated because of thyroid binding globulins and was and it remains almost one and a half times sometimes two times the upper limit of normal or one and a half this is the correct answer for that thyroid binding globulin gets increased during pregnancy in newborn those who are on oc pills taking atamoxifen having hepatitis or active cirrhosis or biliary cirrhosis and sometimes intermittent uh, poor fire yet some families like genetically determined and decrease ta tbg thyroid binding globulin you see the low t3 t4 year androgens steroids cld chronic liver disease some systemic illnesses active acromegaly and nephrotics drugs like phenytoin and sometimes it could be genetical so you you may have alteration in total uh, hormones t3 t4 but t3 pre- t4 will be or pre hormones will be normal in this case when you have a decrease or increase tbg giving the different uh, 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 causes for it another lady who is 32 years old having headache up and on weight gain menstrual irregularity increased sleeping you know so you find out headache is there weight gain and free t4 is low and tss is, is normal but you call it a baby in appropriately normal in appropriately normal it should not be should have be elevated so what are the interpretation here they say pre test clinical suspicion is there hormones are normal thyroid hormone is low but feedback is inappropriate tss is not elevated it should be it means there should be problem in pituitary we call it secondary hypothyroidism if you see such type of patient look for other pituitary hormones see for cortisol and treat them accordingly if you give them thyroxine it may create problems for the patient this is an 61 years who looks older in you know is she is in icu she is having a uh, normal weight and diabetic for 5 years she had acute mi T- tss is low and free t4 is low we call it a another patient another so no ventilatory support again t3 t4 are low tss is non low or you can call it normal so this is what is important so both the cases one in pain function another having uh, pneumonia on ventilatory support t3 t4 are low and so also tss but it may not be pituitary we call it a what day what is important we call it mimic the pituitary dysfunction but this is we call it non thyroid illness those who are quite serious in icu we should not do you know unless we really needed or if clinical suspicion is there we call it a non thyroid illness having the effect on thyroid function this is sickness severely ill patient those who are seriously ill patient we call it sick you thyroid syndrome or non thyroid illness and it can create problems so this is relatively common finding during acute or chronic illness and it is because of the intrinsic abnormality of of uh, hypothalamic pituitary function is not there it is because of the other uh, so we should try to these are the adaptive changes res- responses we should try to avoid testing unless patient is really having suspected to have hyper hypothyroidism this is tss is low 
प्री एल एस टी एफ टी वन इफ एवेलेबल दे आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थायराइड हार्मोन रिप्लेसमेंट इज नॉट नीडेड समटाइम्स इट कैन क्रिएट प्रॉब्लम एंड वी नीड टू फॉलो दम अप एंड रिपीट द टेस्ट आफ्टर दे रिकवर फ्रॉम द एक्टिवनेस इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस डिक्रीज टी वन एक्टिविटी डी टू एक्टिविटी एंड ऑगमेंटेड दे हैव रिवर्स टी थ्री इज मोर इन दैम यू डोंट हैव टू गो इन डिटेल वॉट इज इंपॉर्टेंट एक्यूटली सिक पेशेंट मे हैव लो टी थ्री टी फोर and prognostically they are also very very important another one or two cases i'll take and then we stop and this is majority of hospitalization have low t3 concentration as i have already told you no need to go in details because of shortage of time but those who have low t3 t4 the prognostically those patients are not doing well and concentrations are low primarily because of reduction in serum concentration of one of more three hormone binding proteins like the tpg transthyronin or albumin so that is important to know so problem interpretation thyroid hormone illness we have tsh is low t3 t4 are low but with time as the severity goes off or or if it is t3 t4 both are low then certainly moderate is good i told you prognostically very important but once they recover they become full day so do not check thyroid functions in a sick or critically ill patient unless absolutely necessary For the same, do not interpret thyroid reports in sick patient. That's a message for you. This is another case. I think I'll be taking one or two cases more, and then we stop here. She has a fracture of right femur, post of having atrial fibrillation, and given heparin, and she has atrial fibrillation. The examination was normal. This is TSH is 3.2, pre T4 is is uh, is 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 on higher side. So what is important? This is a drug effect, non-thyroid illness. and radiographic contrast agent showed acute thyroid toxicosis and subclinical hypothyroidism and could be secret tss secreting adenoma these are the differential diagnosis that we drug effect non thyroid illness could be radiographic contrast agent subclinical hypothyroidism or tss secreting adenoma this is the case which i have showed you but what is important heparin can have elevated tss pre t4 levels heparin replaces and you get sometimes this is pre fatty acid concentration and this is a time normal and pre dose so heparin or drugs can give you different and this is 20 years old male 5 years having diffuse goiter and is shorter than younger shape and no signs of except the goiter is pre t4 is is high pre t t3 is high and tsh 8.4 so what it could be So as I told you, it could be here or it could be resistance because this patient is having short and and we have suspicion of thyroid hypothyroidism, but TSH is elevated and and TSH not that suppressed. Rather, T3 four are high and TSH is not suppressed. You call generalized thyroid hormone resistance. Almost family screening was done, and his mother had as well as sister had similar problems. So it runs in families. Thyroid hormone resistance. Sometimes you see. This is another patient who is having T-T-S TSH secreting pituitary adenoma, where TSH is, is is high or normal, but T3 T4 are high, and antibodies were positive, and the patient has atrial fibrillation. So diagnosis wise, naturally TSH should be suppressed in this patient, but TSH is working more in thyroid, and you have the thyroid toxic. You know, the patient was there, and because the she has. Atrial fibrillation and all signs of thyroid toxicosis, but but it was because of TSH secreting pituitary adenoma. And second diagnosis was naturally thyroid hormone resistance. So you see this elevated T3 T4, and we have the alpha and beta subunits of TSH. If, if you have differentiation and TSH MRI could be done. So TSH resistance, as I told you, they have greater palpitation, resting. This is resistance to thyroid hormone. In in pituitary, another case because we done we are running up short and patient could be clinically euthyroid or hypothyroid peripheral resistances. There are thyroid receptor mutations like you have uh, TR you uh, know beta region generalized and so you can have pituitary resistance to thyroid hormone or it could be generalized resistance to thyroid hormone. If it is generalized, patient will have hypothyroidism. If it is only at pituitary, they may have uh, no symptoms of Like tachycardia, palpitation, and goiter. And this is the last case with newborn male baby. We have checked thyroid functions as part of routine hospitalization on second day of the life. 
or after birth. And 3T4 was normal, but TSH was high and parents were worried what to do. But what is important, we have tested bit too early. This is how the TSS remains high immediately after birth and remains so for almost three to four days. So this is the TSS. And so what is important, if you really wish to check thyroid function in a boy or in a newborn, do it after three to four days of the life or even after 72 hours, that is very important. Otherwise, initially you may have to, you know, 40 or 60, you may see it sometimes, TSS, most of the time, it could be a misinterpretation. So we should be doing a screening in a proper way. So pre T4 cutoff are different for infants. TSS high at birth and takes at least 40 to 72 hours for to settle. This may be what test is early and the suspicion of and initially later on he was detected not to have this problem. So what is important? To summarize, I should say we should re-evaluate clinical history, age of the patient, pregnancy status, but they are taking thyroxine therapy, whether they are having other medication like habit or introduced by a parent or steroid, or patient has non-thyroid illness in sick in, in, in ICU. We should not in, interpret those or interpret in the light of all these things, and we should reassess the status and find out whether patient was really hypothyroid, euthyroid, or having <coughs> thyrotoxicosis. Decide which thyroid function is most likely to be discordant. And we should exclude thyroid hormone resistance as well as TSS secreting adenoma and TSS assay interferences. This is very, very important. And we should certainly give our input to the laboratory and we should be keeping in mind the acquired disorders of thyroid, pituitary thyroid, or hypothalamic pituitary uh, uh, thyroid functions and genetic disorders like thyroid hormone resistance and sometimes pituitary uh, TSS secreting pituitary adenoma. To summarize, summary, I would like to say, interpretation of thyroid function is not a matter of interpreting values alone. It is a matter of how apply, how we apply to the patient as a, as a whole, holistically. So we have to always see the clinical history, examine patient, and interpret the thyroid function results properly. I think thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Dr. Mayur. Thank you. If any questions are there, we can, you know, discuss it. Thank you.